Hello, my name is Rachli Kakobadze, and I'm going to be reading uh, <coughs> Vano Achalaya's story, Solo Conversation of a Death Squad member. And before I start reading it, I want to shortly tell you about the background of Mr. Achalaya. Mr. Achalaya has been working as a very, very high level official in the Internal Ministry of Georgia throughout the post modern times and post Soviet times. He has been a member of um, and founding member of the death squads uh, that have kidnapped uh, many different people and committed lots of murders in the regimes of Edward Chevardnadze and Mikhail Saakashvili. And uh, he has been responsible for uh, many acts committed against the peaceful citizens in the name of democracy and uh, free market. Shortly before war, war broke out with Russia in 2008, the war he had predicted, he explained his writings in this way. One of my main goals is to show the disgusting side of violence and show how power corrupts people. I am being very direct, sometimes even to the point of insulting the listener, to be able to inspire him to think critically about existing authoritarian system. Mr. Halaya right now has repented and uh, writes under uh, pseudonyms and publishes stuff in Georgian papers and also in different languages. He sent us gracefully his um, writing here and he'll be very happy for us to display it. <coughs> My name is Givi and this is my story. My life's short story or my short life story. People say I talk too much. They say once I start, I never finish. That's a lie. I do finish, otherwise I'd never get to sleep. People say I'm strange and maybe I am, but I have my dignity. I am an intelligent motherfucker. And I mean that in the best sense. I grew up on Sierra, where we have the best motherfuckers in Georgia. We are the motherfuckers who restored democracy in Georgia. Just don't blame me for the president, who is a son of a bitch. He used us and sent my friends to prison. Thank God I survived. In my life, I have stabbed 15 people and beaten up 100 maybe more, not including my wife, who does not count. The number could be higher, and I've been on drugs for so long, I've lost track. Beating people is never a pleasure, but for me and my friends, violence is a way of life. That's why we back the coup. I used to have a lot of friends, all great people, but now most of them are either dead or in prison. Every other day, I go to church and pray that God will save their souls. My old friend, Pudra, used to operate a racketeering business. In 1992, we started shaking down store owners. They gave us money, a lot of money, no problem. That's how American millionaires started out, so why not us? It was survival of the fittest, and we were the fittest. We paid the police a thousand bucks a month so they left us alone. In return, we provided a valuable service to the community, keeping the streets safe. We'd rob too, but we never hurt nobody and only took the money we deserved. We were true protagonists of free market. I used to bring home about 2,000 bucks a day. Of course, I would spend a lot of it with my friends. We'd go out drinking together, snorting cocaine, smoking hashish, and we'd all be happy as hell. Those were the days. Udra would split up the money and give a piece to everyone who deserved it. If you didn't deserve a share, then fuck you. But once the casinos show up, I started to gamble hard. I lost a lot of money. In a good month, I could make 100,000 bucks, but at the end of the day, I might only have two or three hundred left. How did I lose that much? I don't know. Pudra was angry. So one day he came up to me and said, 
if you stop playing cards or fuck your mother right in front of me. That scared me. Gambling is my weakness. That and heroin. But those are the only two serious ones. Pudra stopped giving me a cut of the take, saying I talked too much and I did not work hard enough. Then he went into oil business, where he made a hell of a lot of money. That's when I found myself without a job. I was in deep shit and didn't know what to do. I decided to join Rioni Death Squad. We were paid well and we could loot as much as we wanted, as long as we didn't get out of hand. That was during the Civil War. We'd go to Mingrelian, loot, rape, and kill the followers of Gamsa Khurdia. One day, my friends killed a little boy who was trying to escape into the woods. They did it just for fun. I threw up for two weeks straight after that, but I didn't know what else to do. It was the only way I could support my family. I needed my fix, and if I didn't have the money, I would have died. I am not proud of it. There was just no other way. I have a dream that one day Georgia will become the kind of place where I won't have to sell my wife for heroin or kill people to survive. Sometimes I think about my father who has never killed anyone or beaten his wife or stolen or even lied. Why did I turn out so different? I love my father, but my friends make fun of him because he does not know how to steal. Although I'm scared to say I'm proud of him. Now that I'm hitting 35, I don't want to feel like shit. I should have been more like him. Pudra was killed two years ago. Someone got so mad, he killed Pudra and four our friends. We buried, them, we buried them all the same day. I thought about killing myself, but I decided to keep living and maybe try to do some good. I am still a motherfucker but I'm trying hard not to hurt other people now. Right now, I just want to go to sleep. When I wake up, I will tell you the story of how we killed a motherfucker named Leah Bar Mitzvah. I will tell you lots of stories, my friends, but right now, I am just tired. And I want to apologize. And I want to say, here is the motherfucker, Vano Achalaya, who wants to apologize to the parents of Sandro Girgliani, who was kidnapped and killed by death squads. I am a motherfucker, Vano Achalaya, who wants to apologize to the parents of Butaro Bakidze, Zura Vazagashvili, and thousands of others, innocent kids who were kidnapped and killed just to be scared to defend the property of few who stole it in these postmodern times. I don't know if I deserve the apology, but I want to. Thank you. <laughs>